I clicked on this attachment here about the Whitney, about the Whitney Houston story, um, and this is February 12, 2012. I think they just uploaded this, and it was Clive Davis. That was the pre. That was the guy or whoever was hosting Clive Davis. Somebody very, you know, big in the music industry. Clive Davis's pre Grammy gala celebrates Whitney Houston's life. So that was the event that she was out there, um, that she was out there at. And they have, like, Jennifer Hudson to honor Houston at the Grammys. Now, some of the details that they said emerged, check this out. It says that um, the morning after Clive Davis's Grammy party turned into a celebratory tribute. So it wasn't that the party was for Whitney Houston or to celebrate Whitney Houston, but they're saying that after that the party turned into a celebratory tribute. It says details surrounding the death of Whitney Houston began to emerge. Now, I remember they said in the other article that she was found in the bathtub, right? You remember that? In the bathtub, unconscious in the bathtub. Here they, it says the singer was found unconscious and submerged in the bathtub of her room at the Beverly Hilton by her hairdresser Saturday afternoon, according to TMZ. She called security. Paramedics were summoned, and a bodyguard attempted to resuscitate her via CPR, but Houston was declared dead at 3.55 p.m. So now here in this update under the music news of MSN, they're saying that she was unconscious and submerged. Have, have, you, have you heard that before, that she was submerged? No, it was, it was almost like somebody just passed out in the bathtub, you know what I mean? You know, but... They say that she was unconscious and submerged in the bathtub and that she was found there by her hairdresser. By her hairdresser. Now remember that this was that this was um the morning after Clive Davis's Grammy party. It was just a Grammy party. And she was obviously invited to the Grammy party. But then the Grammy party somehow turned into a celebratory, a celebratory tribute to uh, Whitney Houston. Now, um, they have a whole bunch of other clicks here if you want to find out about how many Grammys she won in her career. But they said an autopsy was scheduled for today, but police, but police, but police weren't talking about the investigation Sunday and said there would be no updates until Monday. So that gives them like a day or so to get their, you know, all the stories and everything together. Police were no longer at the hotel, but a spokesman would not confirm the investigation was concluded. So they're not talking anything about the investigation. Now, here's some links, uh, Dolly Parton pays tribute to Whitney Houston, quote, I will always love you, end quote. What? That's a tribute right there? Remember, it's Dolly Parton is the one who gets all the money. She, it's her song. She wrote the song. She has, you know, those sort of rights and publishing, publishers rights and royalties and everything like that. But now they say the singer's death coming on the eve of, Sat of Sunday night's Grammy Awards threw organizers and those in town for the event into a state of shock disarray. This is what they want us to believe, that everybody in Hollywood, you know, who are part of the Grammy Awards or those who are in town, they, it threw them into shock disarray. Even as planners work to incorporate a tribute to Houston into Sunday night's events, now they're trying to say that they, they remember the party, Clive Davis. If you know who Clive, you could do a whole vid on Clive Davis. And, you know, I think he was on Tavis, um, 
Smiley's show, but he's he, he's someone who is responsible in in the artistic genius area. I think he's the one who also discovered her. Remember, he's the one who discovered so called who discovered her, as it were. You know, as a I guess she was still a a young a young a young girl. She still was kind of being shaped by this whole kind of industry, you know, this whole industry thing. But it says even as planned as a work to incorporate a tribute to Houston to Saturday night's events, Recording Academy CEO Neil Port now said a light has been dimmed in our music community today. And I remember these people talk in their own sort of, you know, they talk in their own language, though they're speaking English, but they're, they're saying something that a light has, has been dimmed, you understand, turned off, in other words. And we extend our deepest condolences to her family, friends, fans, and all who have been touched by her beautiful, beautiful voice, because this is what they want to keep everybody remembering. Because remember, there's so many folks who will profit off of her music. And if we were able to look at the percentage of profit margin, even though she is the voice, she is the front person for all these investors. And based on how she has been poor trade or betrayed, one could say, but poor trade in the media, even the fact that she was bankrupt and broke and that her concert performances were a flop and a major disappointment, so forth and so on, and just all the mockery out there, the butt of all the comedians' jokes and in all the so-called black circles. Now everybody's talking a different story, a different game. It's the same thing that basically happened after after MJ, after Michael Jackson. Now, um, Davis's Saturday party, Saturday night party, a must attend, a must attend for every star in the music industry. So this means that every star in the music industry was at this gathering. Now, when was this gathering? It was Friday. What is Friday for us, my people, my faithful people? Friday is the Shabbat, is the Sabbath, the Sendat. But if you do not keep the Sabbath kedus holy, you, you know, then most likely you are keeping the devil's Sabbath. And, you know, so basically there's no really uh, three ways about it. Either you are keeping it consciously holy or to go out, party, the clubs, all of that. That's all an extension of the devil's Sabbath or the witches, what's known as the witches Sabbath. So, Everyone was attending Clive's Saturday night party, must attend for every star in the music industry. This is a ritual. This is a music industry ritual. Was set to honor, they say, Richard Branson. So they say this party, Saturday night, was set to honor Richard Branson. Instead, on the red carpet, music stars were asked about the shocking death of Whitney. 48 just hours earlier on the fourth floor of that same hotel. Oh, come on. No, no, I, I didn't read this before, people. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm reading this along with you. I mean, they said all this was taking place at the same hotel. At the very same hotel, that same night. The party, the, the, this, this must attend, notice what it says, it's a must, I'm thinking, you know, that she attended this party, but now I'm finding out in the very same hotel, the very same dude that so-called discovered her to begin with was having a party to honor someone else, and she was in the building, in the very same hotel, just hours before the party, this this Clive Davis must attend for every star in the music industry, right and ritual of passage. They learned, or the, the the stars on the music on the red carpet, music stars. They were asked about the shocking death of Whitney Forty Eight just hours earlier on the fourth floor. So now we're, we're able to put it together a little bit more. It was on the fourth floor, people, of the same hotel. Now Davis. Now, Davis, who discovered Houston, 
and became a mentor, mentor, minotaur, mentor, minotaur to her, was said to be, was said to be devastated. He didn't say, I'm devastated. He was said to be devastated. But, but, what? But, in opening remarks at the party, he issued a call to celebrate her life. Now, now notice how this is even written, folks. He, but, you know, they're going to say something like Davis, who discovered Houston became a mentor to her, was said to be devastated. But in opening remarks at the party, he issued a call, a call, he issued a call to celebrate her life. Now, related stories, Bob, Bobby Brown on stage, quote, I love you, Whitney, end quote. Whitney was a beautiful person and a talent beyond compare, David said. She graced this stage with her regal presence. She was a queen before she went off with that ghetto nigga. That's, that's part of the narrative, people. And gave so many memorable performances here over the years. Simply put, Whitney would have wanted the music to go on and her family acts that we carry on. Really? Really? In this short period of time, the family got in touch with him and said, oh, make sure you carry on. We want the music to go on. Notice how this is all, it's almost like it's already been planned. It's almost like when all the witnesses to something, their stories, um, like, you know, all corroborate, you know, all like, um, what do they call it in law when, when people give uh, testimony and they kind of uh, collusion or something like that? There's a collusion, or you can also call it a conspiracy. Performances and tributes from artists such as Sean Combs, Sean Puffy Combs, Tony Bennett, the, the Kinks, Wiz Khalifa, and R&B singer Alicia Keys, turned the mood into celebration of her life. Bennett kicked off the evening with a subdued performance of How Do You Keep the Music Playing and gave a speech that recalled the tragic deaths of Michael Jackson and Amy Winehouse, who, like Houston, had suffered from drug abuse during their lives. Wow, ain't that great that all those people there, all those um, artists, they're not under no drug abuse. You know, just these artists right here suffering the drug abuse. How about other artists who also were drug abusers and they, anyway, um, but they're blaming this on the drug abuse, right? So look for Dr. Drew to have something. He's he definitely going to do something. Probably is working on it. Probably already he planned it, you know. She always, going on, she always hits you with the beautiful smile, that beautiful smile. She always hit you with that incredible energy. She gave you that hug, that grandma hug, that just shook your body, Combs told the Daily Telegraph. And, you know, I just think, why, is he, why isn't Sean Puffy Combs speaking to the, the, the American press? Anyway, um, the 54th Grammy Awards, 54th, Celebrate the best in American music <laughs> and highlight of the show on Sunday was expected to be a performance by Adele. The first time she returns, the return to performing since she had throat surgery. Paul McCartney is also set to perform. Another anticipated moment is meant to be a reunion of the Beach Boys, but Grammy organizers were scrambling on Saturday to incorporate, to incorporate, to incorporate a legal terminology, the demise of Houston, one of the most successful pop singers, in parentheses should be for, for the music industry of all time. And winner of six Grammys. In her career, Houston sold over 170 million albums and singles worldwide with many hit singles. Her lead single, I Will Always Love You, became the best-selling album by a female artist in the music industry. 
you know, she did all these things. You would have thought they would have treated her a little bit better. I mean, that's just the, 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 ir- the irony of it all. She was the only artist to chart, the only artist, that means male or female, to chart seven consecutive number one Billboard Hot 100 hits. Saving all my love for you. How will I know? Greatest love of all. I want to dance with somebody who loves me. Didn't we almost have it all? So emotional. And where do broken hearts go? Yeah, you know, some of those songs I, I even like too. But um, a spokesman for the Grammy Awards did not return calls about changes to the telecast, which airs on Sunday. In what appears to have been her last public appearance, Houston attended the Kelly Price and Friends for the Love of R&B event at True, True, that's T-R-U, Hollywood, on Thursday night. So she attended Thursday night. Uh, Friday was the Clive Davis event. A couple of hours, 3.55 was when she was found in her bathtub unconscious and submerged. But why didn't they say that she was found submerged in her bathtub? They said that she was unconscious, and then they tried to spin in there. You know, she was on drugs, you know, she was, and, and she lost her voice and stuff like that and erratic behavior, you know. And they include the erratic behavior was actually um, marrying Bobby Brown and staying in that relationship so long because the industry did not like that. That was not part of their plan. So both of them were penalized and punished for that. She arrived with her daughter, Bobby Christina, and walked the red carpet. So this is just Thursday. Now, there was a footnote story that basically said that her daughter was in the hospital. So wait, wait. Um, are you putting all this together? This, this is just a couple. This is a day, day, day. You know, what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and here we're at Sunday, and this is now the story so far. So she walked. She went with her daughter Bobby Christina, and she walked the red carpet. She took the stage to sing a brief duet of "Jesus Loves Me." Wow. Wow. Are, 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 you, are, are you all hearing this? <laughs> she, she sung a brief duet of Jesus Loves Me before returning to her table. She left with her entourage after the performances. And this is uh, Mikey uh, Glazer contributed to this, this report here on The Rap. Um, MSN, uh, this is the music section right here about Whitney Houston, the latest updates. Now, here's what they're doing. Here's what we see they're doing. Let's see if we can move this over here so you can see this front and center. Here's what they're doing. Are, are, are you seeing this right here? Of course, this is just featured videos. People say, oh, it's just featured videos. They just, you know, people want to see Whitney Houston's videos and Adele's videos at the same time seeing that Whitney Houston was found submerged, submerged. That means drowned. In other words, she was drowned in the tub. Now, people say, oh, she was unconscious because she did drugs. She acted erratically, so she just slipped into the water. They didn't say the pool. They didn't say it was a pool. They say a tub, you know, like a bathtub. You know, she was found submerged. Now, how are you going to be submerged in a bathtub? That's why they keep repeating drug abuse and erratic behavior. So you will begin to associate it in your mind that basically it was the drug abuse and erratic behavior. Although we have heard nothing about them finding any drugs or whatever like that. She was found by the hairdresser. Now notice, when she left this event Thursday night, she left with her entourage. She went there with her daughter. Now why is the latest story now saying that her daughter, um, Bobby Christina, is in the hospital. Why are they saying that her daughter is in the hospital today? I mean, 
Is is it because of let's see, um Houston's daughter oh, Houston's daughter released from the hospital. But she showed up at the event with her daughter and that was just that was just Thursday. Remember this is this is Sunday now. She she was reported dead last was it last night? Last night uh, or yesterday? But we got the story here on the East Coast um, at 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 night. Now they say her daughter was just released from the hospital. Well, people, I mean, how can that be? You know that her daughter was released. You mean she left the event and then she took her daughter to the hospital? Her daughter had to go to the hospital or something like that. Or her daughter was put in the hospital. I mean, or something was done to to separate the daughter from the mother, since maybe the daughter was, you know, um, you know, being like a guardian to her mother. You know, like, you know, something put into her food, and she had a little upset stomach, and they said, "Oh, why don't you stay in the hospital for, you know, for at least a day and a night?" The doctor said, "I got to look at you. You know, you're all right, but we just think it'll be best you stay here. Everything all right? Anything you want?" So forth and so on. And she separated from her mother, and the time she separated from her mother, you know, now, you know, now um, her mother is dead. But she was just with her mother at this event, you know, she was just with her mother at this recent event that was on Thursday. I'm just pointing out just some major inconsistencies. You know, for those who are even more deeply interested in this story, and I'm interested in it not that deeply. You know, I'm not trying to do no big conspiracy theory here. But some of us hate or dislike our God-given, our job-given intelligence to be insulted, you know what I mean? Like, you know, they're just lying to you and saying a lot of deceptive, contradictory, conflicting things. And that just makes you want to know, like, well, what's the mystery about this? Why, why did they not mention that she was drowned, that Whitney Houston was drowned in her own bathtub? We didn't say somebody or who drowned her, but the fact that she was found submerged in her bathtub, but they're telling us, like, well, she was unconscious. They kept saying unconscious, unconscious, you know, um, or they would say she was found dead in her hotel room. And then when they give you the story, they say, oh, she was unconscious and she was found by someone. I don't know if they said the hairdresser before. Maybe they did say the hairdresser, but she was found by, and then they said the bodyguard. Now, the bodyguard, what was the body, where was the bodyguard? Where, where, where was he? You know what I mean? And now think, she was obviously in the bathtub, think about it, getting ready, right, getting ready for this Clive Davis event, which was to take place according to the rap and the information that has been um, disseminated in a couple of hours. It was 3, 4, 55, a couple of hours. Maybe the thing's going to begin at 8 o'clock or something, 8, 9 or something like that, o'clock, you know, and she's found dead in the same hotel, in the same hotel, and nobody saw nothing, nobody knows nothing. Everybody says that she was very happy and cheery, so forth and so on when they saw her. Nobody suspected anything. Because, see, they, the police are not giving any story today. The police are not going to talk about anything until, like, maybe later on. We don't know. Maybe not even Monday. You know, it depends on how long it takes for them to get their story together. In fact, I think when these things happen, what they try to do is they have to say something. So they basically tell you the, the, the bare minimum of what happened. And then they hold back and they listen to the public. You know, they listen to what people are saying out there to see, well, how much do people know? Uh, you know, or, or were we found out yet? You know, so let's not release everything. Let's just, you know, just the beer, you know, the beer minimum. You know, let's just say, okay, such and such and such and such, but we're still investigating so forth and so on. 
So maybe we shouldn't even release this just yet, but we got the date stamp and, you know, ye are I and I witnesses, you know, because we want them to say more, you know, because we put this out, you know, and something about Whitney Houston conspiracy or this or that, you know, they got, just like what happened, <laughs> you know, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing that had happened with um, the same thing that had happened with the Michael Jackson, you know, with the Michael Jackson um, story. It's kind of the same kind of thing that had happened with us with the Michael Jackson story. Um, when when we put out, we and other other folks too. I think a lot of people felt something, you know, felt something wasn't right, you know, with the whole story, and it was like conspiracy, and it was not the doctor. You know, in fact, the doctor probably is one of the few people that Michael Jackson rightly trusted. You know, the the, the, the doctor that had been demonized, roundly demonized. Even had Latoya and the rest of them running around at first saying it was a conspiracy and even saying publicly more, more than the doctor. Not so much point that, that he might have, you know, allowed Michael to have certain drugs or freely be able to administer certain things. That's the, that's the original story. But then they got to Latoya. They got to some of the folks, you know, and Latoya is not talking so much. She might still be, you know, to still act like I haven't changed my story, but she might be just giving a lip service, you know. That's what it seems. Don't say that she's going further. It's like everybody is content that for – this African American black singer Michael Jackson, a black doctor, so they made from the Caribbean or something like that, can be associated in the hearts and the minds of the public with um, uh, negligent homicide. You know, with being the cause of Michael Jackson's death. Not Hollywood. Not the industry. Not the Illuminati, not the satanic, you know, the satanic elements and, and, and principalities and powers in that particular industry, but it was this, this doctor who let him get propofol. Oh, you want to know what propofol is? You know, and there was nobody there to, uh, you know, all, all sort of things. And, and people, basically, people basically have eaten that up. Now, it seems like our Internet has gone off here for a moment, and... We'll just use that to pause for the cause because we're now curious about, well, what, what is this about the daughter being released from the hospital? You know, what is this about the daughter being released from the hospital? And so her last song that she did, but they, they, they almost didn't mention that she had um, did any song in some of the other reports, probably because it was Jesus Loves Me and and. Uh, you know, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Okay, that that song right there, little ones to him belong. You may be weak, but he is strong. So, I'm sure that must have sent an uh, industry which is known to be satanic into a tailspin. You know what I mean? And perhaps she was going to come to Clive Davis's um, must attend party. To do something like that would be totally ridiculous. But Whitney had, you know, Whitney got to a point where she be, she was very outspoken when she was, you know, when she had her wits and her will to do so, you know. And she perhaps would have done that. Perhaps she was going to, you know, make certain statements that might be able to save and, and help other um artists, you know, mainly the black artists, but black and white artists, you understand, who are getting caught up in the industry, you know, to learn from her mistakes and to, to be careful about what they're doing, you know, to keep their talent, but definitely don't have their talent pimped out because otherwise you can end up like this, you know. A lot of it's going to be covered up. A lot of folks are going to have amnesia about this you know, amnesia about what they've been saying and doing, that, of course, what do you think Whitney was? You know, Whitney, of course, she, she must have heard some of this, you know, it was all over the Internet. If she went and searched her own name, you know, so part of, part of the heaviness on her was all these people now who talk about how they love her and how they miss her, where were they? Where were they? It seemed like many of these folks were on the same sideline with the mockers and the scoffers. You know, you know, like they say, they, they crucify you and then they want to make you a god and worship you. 
and this is what the Hollywood industry is going to do with Whitney. But I think it was stopping the bleeding. What they what they wanted to do was stop the bleeding, you know, because as many people who who have some serious um, interest in her music, not for Whitney's sake, but for their own investment's sake. And um, the fact that she has not been able to perform in her last performance, her, you know, starting up her, her, her career again, to restart her career again, um, because she wasn't the same so-called Whitney as the iconic, idolized Whitney, um, it made a lot of the folks who have serious interests, like Dolly Parton, of course. She's the one who, pardon me, yes, Dolly Parton, she's the one who um, owns the rights to, like, uh, you know, I Will Always Love You, a lot of these, some of, some of the songs that um, Whitney um, basically owned publicly, but really did not profit off it in the same way as if it was her own song and she had the publishing rights, so forth and so on. So many of those who had an interest in her career, a financial, let's just state it as a financial interest, and this might sound overboard. People might say, oh, they, they wouldn't really do that. Well, if you believe they wouldn't do that, you're a fool. And I say it gladly and straight-facedly. If you believe that this industry, which is all about money, you understand the fame, power, pride, all these false values. Whitney now coming back doing duets. You understand? I don't know who she did the duet with, but coming out doing a duet. Um, Jesus loves me. You know, and I'm sure all of you know that song, Jesus Loves Me, signifies this is also part of the erratic behavior. You see, so far we don't know if. You know, what she did in the past, way in the past, you know, forget about that. You know, some say she still might have been on drugs. You know, well, we don't really know if she was, but perhaps, I think probably the hardest, oh, I, I'm not going to say the hardest thing she did. You know what I'm saying? But I think definitely, you know, the major so-called drug abuse. Notice what it says, ravaged by drug use. They didn't say drug abuse. Notice that key right there, too. You know, by drug Use, they say, not drug abuse. People say, well, what's the difference? There's a big difference. And if you don't know the difference between use and abuse, then I, I will have to say you're a fool. You know what I'm Not about everything, but foolish not to know the difference between abuse and use and erratic behavior. You see, this has to be interpreted. What erratic behavior? What erratic behavior did she do? You know what I mean? More than any other of these crazy artists that take off their clothes or do drive drunk or, you know, um, all kind of wild stuff that, you know, um, she didn't do no crazy stuff like, um, who, who, who was that? Who, who, who was that white girl who, who went bald, who, who balded her hair? Britney. Britney, like Britney Spears, for example. You know what I mean? Britney Spears. You know, the, 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 the erratic thing that she did was that she and Bobby, in a sense, attempted to leave the music industry and that whole Hollywood but, but music industry life behind and try to have so-called a normal life. As my brethren just reminded me, one of the worst things that they probably did was do that reality TV thing. You know, they thought probably it was sold to them that if you do this, people will understand because, look, everybody's doing it, you know. And um, they should have already known better, but probably they needed, maybe they needed money, you know. Um, don't seem like they, they, they manage their money very well. But as far as them loving each other and in God's eyes, being for each other, and they were there for each other. As I say again, that if Bobby and Whitney had stayed together and the media and the prying eyes of the public in that order, the media talks shit and people then follow up on it, and then they're like, oh, what they're doing, oh, oh he shouldn't be with her and this and that, and they have no, that's, that's not their business. They haven't, they didn't commit a crime. 
you know, yeah, Bobby did a couple of things so forth and so on, but you know, that's you know, that's that's there was no biggie, basically. You know, those were no biggies. Those were things that that young men see if they, if he was white, people would say that's what young men do. Young men sometimes act erratic and and do some of these things. It, it's it's the boys will be boys kind of a thing, you know. And that's what you know. That's on a maturity level when he did those things. You know, we can call him like a young man or a boy in that sense, you know, that boys will be boys. But see, the media spins these things and makes more of it, and this contributes to the prolonging the the PTSD, the post-traumatic slave disorder of black people, you understand, and and. and, and you know, there's some more to this, but it just I hope Ja, if you know, hope God have mercy for Jesus Christo's sake on her soul, you know, and also pray for her daughter and even Bobby, you know, because so what they may have made more money than some of y'all or some of us might ever get to in this system of things, seeing how the system of things is going, but still as human beings who who had a right to have their own privacy and live their own lives without kind of a ridicule, you know, public scorn and ridicule and derision and all that other sort of stuff. And it's just gotten worse since the Internet, so forth and so on. This is another case of um, how the public contributes to um, 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 the trauma the trauma of a lot of these regular people like you or me who happen to have had a talent and and fortunately or unfortunately met up with people who could exploit that talent and then end up like this. So, brothers and sisters, I'll pause here on our Whitney comments and, and, and reasoning for right now, but... Um, it's a changing of the guard, you know. She's 48, almost almost a century. I mean, half a century, you know, almost half a half a half a century, almost 50 years. You understand? 40 years. Remember, that's the significant time period we're talking about. 40 years. It's very important just to keep that in mind, because even for the Israelites, the lost sheep and black folk in the Americas and the Caribbean are the lost sheep. One other, one one further note. I mentioned this before that they had went out to um, the African, the African Hebrews of Jerusalem to visit the the black Jews, you know, the African American folk, black people who woke up and who recognized their true call and their true identity as once lost but now found Israelites. And they went out to visit that community. I don't know if they performed or anything like that, but they went out to visit that community at least once. I don't know how many times, but seen some of the write-up about it, that was a very positive thing. We had hopes that they would probably even, because it seemed like they wanted to, to have their privacy, you know, it seemed like they wanted to kind of settle down and, and get away from all the, all the negative that was, that was circulating against them, you know what I mean, because the industry didn't want a girl like her in a sense, to be with a guy like him. And I contrast that with Jay-Z and Beyonce. It's a little different with them. And it could be because um, of what the people, and black people in particular, you know, we learn things, but a lot of these things we learn unconsciously. You know, like we have a vibe about something, like we, we're spiritual or we're emotional, soul people, emotional to spiritual some people stay in the emotional zone, but we're emotional to spiritual people, so we pick up on things. We're sensitive to certain things, and I think after black people looked at themselves with even the Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown, um, all the negative, you know, that they, they – and even Michael Jackson situation, that that probably paved the way, hopefully, for even some of these celebrities and stars – if they're willing to have a normal uh, or seemingly normal um, or regular relationship, you know, with people respecting their privacy. But unfortunately for Whitney Houston, 
especially for her because she's the one who's dead now and and as this conspiracy thick as the plot thickens um hopefully we'll learn more but for right now may John have mercy on on her soul and pray for you know her daughter her nearest and dearest and 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 for Bobby as well because um you know um I think there are still elements of the satanic music industry that still don't that are going to blame him. They're going to blame him definitely for what happened to her although he was nowhere uh, you know nowhere around always spoke highly of her, you know, um and and respected, you know, their relationship as far as not to, you know, like some people do and they always was poking and pride in her like Oprah did when she first came out or was coming out. Um, look at that Oprah in, interview again now. Um, and what I get in that particular Oprah interview is that um, it was another um, bad black man, you know, black male. It was another black, don't be under black male in any shape, form, or fashion, you know. And... Um, I think they pushed her to do things she didn't want to do. I think they could have worked out their relationship, and I think they probably should have been allowed to. But then uh, I guess that's speaking about a more perfect world. We have to deal with the one, the one you know, the one that is, and work for the one that is. Work to bring the one that is to come. And this right here, this 2012, is a bridge. Not all are going to make it over this bridge. Some are falling, and some have already fallen by the wayside. Um, may John have mercy on their souls, if if he wills. Amen and amen. So shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Arasi Adinos, Tafari Wendem Yadin.